afternoon, everybody. It's Ray Diaz from Pro String. We're about to start a live uh, stringing session with um, with Julian Oclepo, Italian professional Italian tennis player, ranked 310 on the ATP tour right now. Um, I'm just going to wait for him to connect. Hopefully, you guys all enjoy it. He's just connected, and uh, we're about to begin. Surviving, surviving this uh, strange times. It's not easy, huh? Eh? Unbelievable situation. It's incredible. Yeah. How um how are you uh, dealing with everything? Well, it's been five, six weeks for you. Uh, more or less, yeah. I've played my last tournament in Croatia, uh -huh. and then came back home and and didn't move since. Where where are you based at the moment? I'm uh, in my hometown near Torino, in Italy, okay. and I'm with my, my brother and my father. Okay. You string? Cool. I'm going to string a racket while I talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> a little, something, something a little bit different. Yeah. What racket? Something a little bit different. What racket is it? It's uh, a Yonex. Yonex uh, Ezo 98. Nice, nice. I'm going to string it with. Uh, I have my own brand. I think I told you when I when I saw you in. in yeah. yeah, it's one of the one of the new multi filaments I make now in, in Austria, um, and it's actually selling quite well. Uh, not not at the moment because at the moment I have no business. But actually, I had a few rackets come in over the last few days. I don't know how. So two different people brought four rackets, but I think some people are playing in, in private courts. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually able, I'm one of the lucky ones, I'm able to still coach three times a week. It's actually with an Italian family, funny enough. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Um, and they know, um, what's his name? They're very good friends with, uh, with Vincenzo. Um, Santo Val, uh, Vincenzo oh, yeah, yeah. is... Oh, yeah, Berrettini's coach. Yeah. That's it, yeah, Berrettini's coach, exactly. Yeah. Um, 22. Perfect. Uh, so, um, so how have you been dealing with everything? You training still? You uh, you working out religiously? Or uh, not really? I've been just playing some a, li a little bit uh, in the garage against the wall, and okay. uh, and uh, I have a little gym that I, that I, I I I set up in in the terrace, so I do some stuff. But nothing special. Yeah. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. When was that? When was the last time you actually hit a ball? I think like three weeks ago, maybe. Two. Three weeks. Okay, so just yeah, shortly. When, when did you go, When did you guys go into lockdown properly? Uh, like about two months, one month and a half. I don't. I don't really know. I played. I played. I played in a, in a private court, but then, then they uh, they closed that one also. So nothing. Yeah. yeah, that's the only thing open in London, is just people who have uh, either private court or uh, private communal courts, where if your apartment is overlooking the garden with the court, you can you have access to it. But uh, like, So luckily I'm, I'm able to at least have three hours of coaching a week at least. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, not a, it's not an ideal situation, is it? No, not really, not at all. Yeah. You know, are you, uh, are you doing a little bit of physical training or just more hitting and yeah, hitting yeah. and garage physical as well? I, I run a little bit and uh, I try to run every day, but it's kind of hard because I'm a, I'm a bit lazy also, you know, so. <laughs> but, um, uh, when you go running, when you go outside for a run? Yeah, no, just in my, in the, in the, like, the little garden we have down here. Um, you have a, a little a private garden or something? Yeah. yeah. Very cool, very cool. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to start with uh, with a few questions about your rackets and your your material sports, uh, your tennis uh, uh, equipment, and then then I'll change into a little bit on your uh, on your career. Yeah. Well, yeah. I play with the I play I used to play with the racket you're swinging right now, but oh, you see with the index, eh? Yeah. But now I change and I play with the Wilson blade. Uh, 16, okay. Sixteen, nineteen, and uh, I use uh, strings. That 
I have I have a, a great sponsor which is um, Turing Project and uh, which one? Turing Project. Turing Project, yes, I've heard of them. I've never had, I've never had the pleasure yet to uh, actually string with them or, or use them myself. But the the Pro one one twenty seven, I think. But I really like yeah. it. So I think it's uh, I think it's a great string. I really liked it, so I I kept using it, and uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so polyester, I guess, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And how long does a uh, how long does a string last you, for example? Um. Well, the new one usually lasts like about one hour and a half, two hours. Okay. On clay. Yeah. So you're getting through a string in ninety minutes to two hours. Yeah. It's not not very, not very long. Not very long, but not bad. I mean, it's alright. Then I I change also the racket while I. So I I managed to keep it. Yeah. Yeah. Now. What um what tension do you play at normally? Normally I play about twenty four. Twenty four kg. Enough, yeah. yeah. And uh, when I move on hard court, I play uh, twenty five, twenty five and a half. Okay. And uh, does that ever change much if you're playing in altitude? Yeah. Um, when I played in India in altitude and I and I went like 26, 27. And, 26, 27. Uh, yeah, last year also in Segovia, I played uh, like 27 and a half also. Segovia so in Spain, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and what's, uh, what's your preference uh, on court? You like uh, playing or hard court? Uh, I, I like I like both of them. I don't really have like a, a preferred one because I I think I'm uh, I I used to it you know, pretty much easily. I, I don't I don't need like time to get used to different uh, surfaces. So it's not a big change for me. Yeah. So you you quite even because when I met you I think the tournament uh, yeah. in London that we met at yeah it ended up being actually into a hardcore in the end right? It's raining yeah. That's right. Yeah. And what's what's the weight of your what rack are you using at the moment? So you said you're using the Blade ninety eight. Uh, it's about Blade ninety eight. It's about three three forty, three forty five. Oh wow, okay. Three forty forty. It's a little bit heavier, I would say. I mean most of the people that I that I know and have actually been speaking to the last week or two with interviews probably roaming around 310, 330, so I think you're a little bit heavier I'm than... I'm talking about with everything, because I use a leather grip, you know, so, and... Okay, I use, I use it, yeah, I love leather grips, you know. Makes it a little bit heavier, and gives it that little extra hard feeling underneath, doesn't it? Yeah, I like it. I think when, once, once you start using it, then you can't go back to the normal grip. I know, I know. I, I had to... I got, I got some new rackets the other day, well, a few months ago. And uh, I tried using the normal grip because I, I didn't know where my, my leather grips were and I had to use the normal one. It was so different. So different, yeah. It makes it you can't go back. You're, you're, you're right there, I think. Yeah. Um, so using the blade, 1619, you said, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Which, which one is there? Because I, I know there's a few different ones out there. Um, is yours a yours is customized one? Yes. As well? Uh, H, H22. You're using the H22. Nice. Okay, nice. It's not, you, you can't actually, can you, can you, it's a pro stock racket, right? You can't really... Very, uh, very difficult to find them. You can't, um, you can't just buy that racket in the shop, right? No, oh, no, unfortunately you can't. I think it's one one of the best rackets, but uh, it's very hard to get. Very hard. Yeah. And you, you, you get it directly from Wilson, yeah? I have a few under my bed, if you can see. I'll show you. Right here. There you go. There's the collection of uh, yeah. Giuliano Clepper rackets. Very nice. Very nice. The new colors. And, and do you know how to uh, you know how to string? Have you ever strung a racket before? Or I, I tried a couple times, but uh, I, I, it was like two hours and 40 minutes. So then, uh, <laughs> then, I, then I, I, I preferred giving to the, to the stringers. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, so when you when you're playing um, tournaments and, and, and competing, how, how many rackets would you string for a normal match? Uh, probably probably three. I I, I, three. I normally have five rackets and I string three new ones and I use one for the one for the warm up in the morning and then I start the match with three new rackets. 
Okay. Would you spare one? The one that you sorry? And then I just keep a spare one, you know, for the next days and then I, I don't I don't yeah. think twice the same racket. In the in the same day. Okay. And would you use the, the warm up one? Would you cut the warm up one out again, or do you use that one the next day if you win? Or oh, uh, I no, no, I just uh, every day for every match I start with three new rackets, and then three. Uh, the one the oldest one I cut, and then the one that's you know the the, the second oldest one I, I use for the warm up. Got it. Got it. Okay, cool. What's what's your preference? Um, Singles or doubles? I know your your rankings are two two hundred and a bit. Yeah. I think two ten or two something as well. More or less. Um, I don't really know. But doubles and then three ten and singles. Yeah. What's what's, what's your preference? Uh, singles or doubles at the moment? Um, maybe singles, but I also enjoy doubles because I have uh, fun, you know, playing it, and it's uh, and especially when when I have the chance to playing challengers and with the. Uh, a couple of friends that I know very well on court, and and we can we can have some good results. So I think it's very fun, and I always uh, enjoyed it playing. But uh, now I started playing also very well in singles. So I mean, when, I think when you win, when you win like when you have big results in singles, nothing is like you know nothing pays like uh, like it like it does when like you win a match or. Or for sure. or tournament, you know, even even in doubles, because yeah, it's always. I'm not saying that I don't like it, but it's always you have to share, you know. So I mean, it, it's great also to win in doubles. I mean, I won three challengers in a year, about two years ago, two years and a half ago, and uh, it was. I mean, it was great. It felt unbelievable. But you know, when you win something on your own, it, it's it's uh, a feeling that, that that you don't have it in uh, in any. Other, I don't know. I, I mean, not in. in it, it's just different. It's a different feeling because everything comes, you know, out of out of yourself. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's more, uh, yeah, more, um, more satisfying. Yeah, more satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you play. I was looking, uh, doing a little bit of homework on your on your career so far. You, your first ATP point was when you how old? I don't really remember. I think about sixteen or seventeen. Sixteen. So you got it quite quite early on, let's say, to to possibly the, probably, the average. Probably seventeen. Probably seventeen. Sixteen, I think, is a, was quite early. I was seventeen or eighteen, maybe. It was in Italy in Sassuolo. You play. You play a lot in Italy, yeah. I see that you you play quite a few tournaments normally. Yeah. We, I mean, we have we have we're lucky to have a lot of tournaments, especially challengers in the in the summertime. We have almost a challenger every week, so uh, pretty lucky to have all those tournaments and and uh, futures as well. We have some futures in Sardinia uh, uh, a lot, so yeah. I think Italian Italian players are very lucky that can play, you know, near home without traveling like crazy all the time. Yeah, that saves probably saves good money as well to have to travel too far away. Um, so you think you guys almost have a challenger per week? Almost, not every week, but really? in the summertime. So you have at least at least thirty, would you would say, probably around thirty-ish challengers, maybe. Yeah. I think um, you guys have one of the. You must be one of the top two or three countries to have um, to have the most futures as well. I believe you guys have almost every week. Like, must be yeah, like probably almost probably forty. Like yeah, thirty, forty. I don't, I don't really know, but more or less. That's yeah, yeah, roughly. Yeah. And um, going back to the streaming a bit, how much would you say you spend per tournament? Um, I mean, of course, it depends how much, how many matches you win and stuff. But yeah, um, how much are you paying per racket in futures and in challengers? For the friends and challengers, normally it's about fifteen euros or dollars. Uh, uh, I, I tell you, the challengers, I spend more or less like about two hundred dollars per per tournament. <laughs> Or like 150 or 200, and when I travel in futures, uh, uh, most of the time I travel with the, the with my coach, and he brings the, the machine, and he does it for for me. Oh, so you have your, your coach strings for you when, when you guys travel, yeah? Yeah, in futures, most of the time he strings for me. Even even outside of Italy, you have a portable machine, or yeah, portable machine. Which machine you guys have? The pro stringer. 
no, it's not the electric one. It's the manual one. Ah, uh, the um, okay. Yeah, probably. The the red one with the you, you build it from you turn upside the box. Yeah, that's that's a very interesting one. It's an old one. Yeah. It's a lot. You see that one? I think a lot in South America. Yeah. In, in Argentina. I mean, he got it from an Argentinian friend, so. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can only buy them. I think you can only buy them around there, or it's the best place to buy them, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that saves you. That saves you um, a good amount of money then. Well, I mean, I don't know if you pay him or not, but yeah, yeah. Um, well, no, it's safe because you know, we have some tickets where it's 10, 10 euros, or other futures where it's fifteen or eighteen. I mean, it's, sometimes it's crazy, so it saves a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. So, um, how how do you um how do you fund your tennis career? How do you live uh, day by day? You know, it's very expensive to to uh, have a tennis career when when you're not in the top hundred. What's your your main um? Well, fortunately, my family helps me a lot, and uh, uh, I'm very lucky on that side because uh, the people are very helpful, and uh, and uh, I'm I'm grateful for that because without them. Surely, I, I couldn't play. I couldn't play tennis and travel all around and and, and you know, like spend all the money I spend for 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 traveling and playing the sport because I think it's one of the most expensive sport that that we have you know today. So. Yeah, it must be must be one of the most expensive ones. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, the traveling for yourself, for the coach, the rackets. Uh, you don't have sponsors. Uh, this and that. It's uh, yeah. most, one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive one. So I said again. I said it's it's one of the most expensive one, if not the ex I mean the, the most. Yeah, for sure. Individually, yeah, for sure. But, you know, if if you're very lucky to come with a coach, and otherwise you travel alone. But I mean, most of the players travel alone, or if they don't have a. Uh, help from their f their own federation. So yeah, it's a uh, it's a tough very tough sport to be in. Yeah. And um, how how did you get into tennis? And what age did you start playing at? Well, I started playing around six and seven, and uh, I I get I got into tennis because of my father because he was a professional tennis player. So he started to, we started together, and um, he just put the racket in my hand, and we used to go to the club and, and play. For for like just you know just for fun like you like you do as a as a kid. And then I started playing a little bit more seriously at around uh, thirteen or fourteen, and uh, and now I'm here, uh, ranked uh, three hundred and ten in the world more or less. And uh, I think it's been a uh, it's been great. I mean, even the last maybe the last years were. were where I accomplished more, so I'm very, very happy where I am today, and I hope uh, I can uh, push a little more and, and and do better. So you, you said your dad played professionally as well, yeah? Yeah, he was a professional tennis player in, around the 70s. 70s. What, what was his best ranking? Or? He was, uh, he got, I think, to 30 in the world. 30 in the world? Oh, wow. Amazing. So you, you hope to to follow your your dad's footsteps, huh? I, I hope to. I have to. My 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 my, my um, objective is to beat him, but I think it's very hard. So, <laughs> so it's a family a family challenge, huh? Not just yeah. A, yeah. a personal one. Yeah. Very cool. Um. What else do we have? Um, Oh yes. Yeah. What you? One of the best. Sorry? One of the best doubles players is here, Andreas Mies. Yeah, Mies. Yeah. He's, he's oh, uh, is he coming? You saying? Yeah, he's looking. He's best. He's all good. Very good. Cool. Player in the world. He um, he's top. He's top twenty now, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. So he won, did, he, did he not win last year? He won um. He won uh, Roland Garros last year. Roland Garros. Yeah, he won Roland Garros last year with um. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I'll have to chase him down to see if I can get an interview with him as well. <laughs> um, uh, what else was I saying? What's What's your biggest challenge um, in in tennis? What's What's What do you find your your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge. Uh, I think you know, just uh, 
I mean, it's, I think it's a very uh, difficult sport, and uh, mentally and physically, it, it's, it's, I mean, the last few years, it's, uh, it's been, you know, with all the people playing and, 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 uh, and this, I mean, it's very hard to, to I mean, from, for myself, it's, it's been very hard to, to, um, control my, my emotions, so I've been, I've been working on that a lot. I think uh, I've got a little better, and uh, I'm, I'm more probably a little more relaxed on court when I play. And I think it's uh, it's been a crucial thing of uh, about my my tennis to work on that my attitude because it's uh, it's one of the biggest uh, parts of tennis, you know, mental and uh, more than more than I, I mean, in my opinion, than than uh, technique and tactics. So. Yeah, yeah, that's what they say. It's very uh, tennis is a very mental game. Uh, yeah. everybody plays at a very high level. So, you know, yeah, especially at a high level. level. Yeah, especially at a, at a high level. I mean, uh, the, the level of tennis is not very different now, like it was maybe uh, years ago. Because I think that the number that is three hundred in the world. I mean, in, in a match, you know, he can occasionally beat a, a number fifty or a number sixty. Maybe a few years ago that wasn't possible, but um, the different, the big difference is the mental game and the and the, and the crucial moments. So that's uh, uh, fundamental. Yeah. What's the what's the best ranked player you've you've beaten until uh, until now? Um, I think uh, uh, Misha Zverev. Uh, last year in, in, in Monte Carlo in the qualifications, he was about okay. seventy or I don't I don't remember seventy or seventy five. I can't remember. Was that first round, Polly? Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, so you did you get a wild card to get in? I got a wild card from the from the federation. Fantastic. Yeah. Who did you Who did you play in second round, Polly? I played uh, Andre Otzi and I lost pretty easy. I lost six three six one. Okay. Okay. How did you How did you feel after that match? Oh, it was special because I, I mean, I, I've started to play in that in that club, and I was born there, so I lived, uh, I lived my my uh, part of my life in, in in Monaco. I went to school there and everything, so I, I kind of grew up there. So it was a special okay. moment for me to play in front of my friends and family over there and be able to to win that match. Fantastic! You were, you were the local, the local, uh, the local boy. Yeah, exactly. More or less. <laughs> Very cool. What was it? What was um, the feeling? Were you nervous before going on court, knowing that everybody was going to be there to, yeah, to support you? I was very nervous. It was one of the most, one of the time that I was most nervous, and and since I play tennis, because uh, I mean, it was my, it was the. I, I, since I was a kid, I was, I was uh, going there and watch every every match of the tournament because, as I told you before, I lived there. So it's it's always been a dream for me to play that tournament. So finally, I, I got the chance to play it, and uh, and the first time winning uh, the, the the first round of qualies it was uh, special, important. I mean, I've I've seen my whole life. Uh, uh, that tournament with all the players, and I remember finals of Coria and Ferrero playing there. I, I mean, I mean, you, you know, must have been out like Nino, you were a little kid. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was unbelievable. Well, you're still, you're still, uh, what, you're 22 now? Tw yeah, 23 in August. 23, so turning 23 this year, so you, I mean, yeah. relatively speaking, you're, you're quite well ranked already for, for your age. Yeah, it's alright, it's okay. I, I've I've moved up the last couple of months. And I think it's uh, it's been great. I mean, I'm 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 kind of disappointed in in this uh, stuff that we have to we have to have, but it's the right thing to do in a moment. Like you know, we can't do much, but um, it's, 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 it's a it's really, yeah, it's a really it's a really tough one uh, globally. I mean, nobody wanted to stop doing even just the average job, even maybe not not, not even uh, athletes, let's say, but no, it's, no. It, it really, it's truly incredible what's what's happened. You know, you guys are used to being outdoors all the time as well, um, including myself as a, as a tennis player, stringer and tennis coach. Um, being outdoors all the time, following the sun as you, as, you, as professional players do, yeah. and uh, being locked indoors now, it's just, you know, 
one would have ever said. It's, it must be, um, you know, I was talking to, uh, to Noah Rubin the other day a little bit, and, you know, it's incredible how a lot of people, you know, mental health is really becoming, uh, I mean, it was already an issue, I think, more secretively, though, you know, people really didn't speak about it openly, but now I think it could be a game changer as well. Um, you know, everybody's in the same boat now. Yeah. Um, it would be a little bit different, I think, for everybody to come back. Everybody's situation would be different depending on age as well. I mean, you'll probably be fine. I think, you know, guys under 30 will probably, um, you know, first yeah, couple of weeks might be a little bit different. A little quicker, maybe. But uh, yeah, exactly. it's difficult. We'll have to see what what the ATP and the, and all the organizations, you know, what they what they have to say and, and, and how will the new rules will be. Because, uh, I mean, of course something will change after this. I mean... Uh, in life in general, I think, and especially in in, in tennis, because uh, it's I think it's very hard to 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 manage people from all around the world coming in, in a single place and play a tournament. So that's I think that's going to be an issue, but we'll see what they have to say about it. Yeah, what would you um if you were the director of the ATP tour, what would you uh, how would you deal with it? Or is it uh, Honestly, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be the director of the ATP because, uh, in this situation. I mean, I have I have completely zero ideas. But um, I mean, for sure something will happen, and we'll just we'll just see what happens. But it's it's difficult. I mean, it's it's kind of an, an, like right now I'm trying to think, but it's kind of impossible to think of a solution for for you know everybody meeting in, in the same place. Uh, in the same locker room with, with I mean, or we, maybe they're going to create big spaces or, I, I mean, it's difficult, it's difficult. It's, it's, a, it's a really hard question, isn't it? It's like, how? Like, uh, like, uh, I mean, people are studying this uh, since like three months, but nobody has come to, to an answer yet, so. Hmm. We'll just, yeah, we'll just, just got to wait and hope for the best, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, What's your so in your own game? What's your what's your favorite shot? Um, the best one I think uh, maybe uh, a, maybe hitting a winner doesn't matter forehand or backhand. Just just going back as you like you just like to tee off and yeah. go for it. Yeah, that's your your favorite yeah. your favorite moment. Sometimes no preference. Like yeah, no, 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 no. Sorry. Just close my eyes and hit the ball as hard as I can. <laughs> so no shot, but there's no serve, all the forehand back, and you kind of no, no, happy to hit it. Yeah, yeah, every shot I'm happy with. Yeah, cool. And uh, who's your who's your favorite tennis player currently, or or even um, in the in history? Well, I don't I don't really have a favorite tennis player, but uh, I think. Uh, well, I think uh, if I have to choose one of the the big three, it's gonna be Djokovic because I think uh, there's. The, I mean, if I had to play against him, I, I I wouldn't know how to how to start the match, the point, the the game, or anything because I don't I don't I, I can't I can't find a like a, a weak spot, you know. So normally, like there's there's always a weak spot. You you play like on his backhand, and then you move him to his forehand, and then you attack him again on the backhand, or or you serve uh, wide and you move and you try to move the gap, but there's there's no weak spot that I can think of. So I mean, it would be it would be confusional to play against him. Yeah. What's Rafa's weak spot then? I have no idea. What, <laughs> weak spot, uh, I mean, on clay, you just have to be lucky. Like I think I think well, I'm not sure, but I think that people most of the time people when they play against these players, they just go outside and and. and like they, they, they're playing the out so they're already lost. You know, they just go outside. And play the game. I mean, it's kind of mean yeah. to play like this, but I mean, uh, you have yeah. the you have the opportunity to swing a little bit freer, probably than if you yeah, play yeah. somebody else. Yeah, yeah. You, just go, you just go outside. You don't think, and, and you enjoy the moment because you're playing against the, the, one of the best players in the world, or, or or even history that, or even that will ever exist in in, in tennis, but. So you just try to enjoy the moment, but uh, everybody's seen uh, Nadal or Djokovic or Federer doing things that no one uh, could imagine of, you know, so yeah. even even like winning now, if, if, if somebody wins a Grand Slam, it's like a normal thing, you know, the, the guys won it 18, 20, 21 or whatever. I mean, it, is, it is truly, truly incredible what they're doing for tennis. It's unbelievable. It's almost a shame, it's a shame in one side because... Nobody else gets the, try, the chance to, to win the big prize money or at least make it always, you know, to semis and 
um, and things like that. It's, it's, yeah. it's, you know, it must be tough, even if you're top 20, 30, you think, you know, I want to win a Grand Slam. Okay, it's going to be well, Rinka, Del Potro, yeah, Murray. So, so, many, the... so many amazing players that, that can't, that can't like, you. Uh, even T- even Dominic Team, he's like a, he's maybe the best player that we have now, except for those three. But uh, it's it's uh, kind of impossible to, to win something to, to win a slam right now. It's true. And um, have you ever have you ever had a chance to practice with any of them? Or I, practiced, I practiced yeah with all of them because I. As I told you before, I used to go to the Monaco tournament all the time, and I used to be uh, practice partner. So uh, I had the chance to practice with uh, with all of them, uh, forty minutes, a half an hour. So it's, okay, so you've been able to, to play with that's that's an experience itself. Yeah, really. it's, always, it's always special to play with the players. You, you learn a lot even in in forty. Minutes, so of course. <laughs> Um, uh, and uh, one of my last questions: What's your your biggest regret so far? I know you're only 22, so you probably don't have many, if any. What's your b- biggest regret so far in your in your tennis career? Would you say, if you had to say one? Well, in general, I would uh, I would uh, go back go back in time if I could and and do things a little better, because uh, I think if I've done things a little better in general, like uh, maybe. Uh, I would I wouldn't be in a uh, where I am today, but maybe I would be in a in like a in a higher ranking spot or another in an or you know, but mo- most of it is that in the high in in another situation that I am today. So even even if I think of of doubles, also a, a few years ago I was about one hundred and and sixty if I if I'm not wrong and. Maybe I could. Yeah, I think something like that. I could, have, I could have gone top hundred, but you never know. I mean, people think you know it's very it's a, it's a it's very easy to go from one thirty to one hundred in doubles, but it's I think it's one of the hardest things also because there are so many points of difference between the uh, ninety yeah. play in the world and the on one hundred and twenty. It's like uh, uh, six hundred points difference. So and and challenge yeah. it's very tough to win to win doubles. I mean. Probably it's probably tougher to win a, a, a doubles challenge. I mean, not one, but you have, but you have to like win eight or nine to, to have a chance to go in the top hundred. So it's yeah. in, in one single year. So it's it's quite quite hard. Also, I mean, everything in tennis is it's getting harder and harder with all these players over the world and, and so many of them. So uh, yeah, I mean, maybe just think, do things a little better and, and and take chances that I had that I that I didn't take. When you say do things a little bit better, what do you mean exactly? I mean like uh, on, on court, on court training or yeah, mentally. Yeah, no, no, like on, on court, especially on court, like training uh, or or uh, you know not being lazy when I was lazy uh, or just just working maybe except to work on my mental before and then 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 waking up you know later. So yeah, that's. That's, yeah, well, that's, that's good that you that you see it though I guess from a point of, uh, from from a player's point of view at least you, you you can see that and you can say okay hey look I, I did this I could do this better like you say um, now I want to do it better and try to get out of my my, my ways because everybody has habits you know that we can improve we have good ones bad ones and that's good that's that you, you realize and say okay yeah, I need to I need to do this if I want it, this is what I want right yeah that helped. I think it helped me very a lot in the, in the last Maybe one year and a half, and, and especially in the last month. And uh, one last question: What would you, what do you think you'd be doing if it wasn't for tennis? Now, what would you, what would you choose to do if it wasn't for tennis? Well, if it wasn't for tennis, uh, I, w- I was gonna probably play soccer a little bit because, or football. I don't know if it's English or. Not. I don't want to spot it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was born in Canada, so <laughs> soccer, uh, football, I understand. <laughs> I, I used to play soccer when I was uh, when I was little and I, and I liked it. It was one of my favorite sports. So I was gonna probably play soccer, and I don't know where, but um, I, w- I wasn't great at it. But um, uh, so and then maybe I don't know. I just uh, work at work with my dad or, or do something else for sure. Uh, what is it? What is what does he do at the moment? If I can ask. He he's he, doesn't uh, he has nothing to do with tennis now he he has a different he has a, a, a 
like a packaging company, you know, where he packages okay. the chocolate. So oh, really? okay. a whole different world. So yeah. Very cool. So, uh, free, is, is he can sponsor you with chocolates. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I try to stay away from it, you know, because it's not, it's not good for me. But, um, what, what, so what, are you talking about chocolate? What's your favorite food then? My favorite food? Uh, probably, probably chocolate. That's why I never go with him. <laughs> eat everything, you know? Very cool. <laughs> Sweet, man. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I think we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up there. And, uh, thanks a lot for your time. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Hopefully uh, you can get back back on court as soon as possible. I'm dying. Uh, to, I know I'm getting a few hours on court still, but I'm just dying to, to get back on court and hit the balls for myself as well. And I I hope to to be able to to be back competing very soon and 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 travel all the all around the world to to see all you know my friends and colleagues and and have fun with them again. Look at that. One of my friends uh, just connected Kyle. I know there's not many people connected right now, but if anyone has a question, go for it before we. Uh, before we disappear into into lockdown again. <laughs> um, but it was a pleasure, man. Thanks a lot again for, for your time, and, and I'll be following you closely, and we'll keep in touch. And uh, good luck, man. I hope to come uh, the uh, to the UK soon, and so we can spend some time together, maybe again. You, you planning on coming over to, to play in tournaments? You, you know, or well, probably we'll see what happens when when we go back on tour. But um... well, yeah, yeah, true. That's it. Yeah, the summer tournaments, a lot of ones in, in the summer here. Well, if you can class England as it having a summer, but yeah, but uh, yeah, who knows what's going to happen? We'll see. More rainy days together. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that? It was just, oh, the rain kept raining. You guys went on court three times. See, okay. that's another tough part about tennis as well, right? Yeah. Waiting around, not necessarily the playing the matches that can make you tired. It can be the, the mental the no mental part was just just draining. I remember we waited. You went on court three times to play a doubles match with with uh, Francesco Villardo. Yeah. Uh, and you just every time you went on, we ended up. You guys ended up playing uh, indoors. I remember that now. What did he say? Yeah, tell him to come to Chisholm Riverside. <laughs> so Kyle, he's with um, he's one of the um. Uh, he's like one of the. I would say I would class him as one of the managing directors there, but um, he's head of sales, I believe. But um, yeah, come back to Riverside. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Awesome. Thank All right, you. Julian. Thank you, man. Thank Bye. you. Really appreciate it. Thank Take you. care. Have a good day. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Take care. Ciao. Hey guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Um, we've got another special guest uh, on on Wednesday. I'll confirm the hour with a, an Instagram and Facebook post on Pro String. Um, we will be interviewing Marco Tungaletti from uh, Argentina. Um, should also be an interesting uh, interview. So tune in on Wednesday. And uh, until then, guys, keep safe. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Take care. Be safe. Ciao.